This video is about notation, and we're going to introduce a new notation that may look confusing at, at first, but I want you to remember that notation is, uh, in mathematics, notation is used not to confuse you, although I think that's probably what many of you think it is used for, um, but it's, it's meant to help you uh, write less and just abbreviate. I mean, many of you have Facebook, I'm sure, and if you want to say talk to you later, you write T-T-Y-L. And as long as people understand that those are representing the first letters in that common phrase, everybody knows what you're talking about. So as long as we understand what the pieces of this notation mean, everyone should know what we're talking about when we write it down. And it'll be a lot less writing. So the word, so sigma notation involves uh, this symbol. All right, and that's a Greek, I think that's a Greek S. And... In math, when you see that, you want to think of the word sum. Okay, it means to sum. So, the way sigma notation works is this. If I wanted to write 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 in sigma notation, I'm going to get that symbol down, and there are a few spots where I need to put some other, some other, uh, other ideas. So, generally, Next to this S, we put a closed form of the rule that connects these two num uh, connects all these numbers above. So I'm going to make a list or a table rather, and if I just put my numbers in the list, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And I'm going to call it the one, uh, the two, the first term, the four, the second, the six, the three, etc. What I want you to notice is that these numbers are related in a special way. And I can figure out the rule by saying, okay, what would the nth term look like? Well, in general, this is, um, this is a sequence of terms that are going up by two every time we go up by one in this column. And so if we think about if we think about a, a line, this is behaving like a line because the rate of change is constant. Um, I can think of my slope as being two over one. So I'm gonna put two n and let's see if I need to add anything. Well when I plug in one I'm supposed to get out of two. If I plug in 1, I get 2 times 1, which is 2, so that's good. So I don't really need to add anything. All right, so there's my rule. So the way sigma notation works is I'm going to put the rule right here, 2n. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I'm going to let n start at 1, and I'm going to have it end at 6. And this is sigma notation. So if I want to add those numbers above, and I want to express that sum in sigma notation, it looks like this. So just to be clear, I'm going to kind of now go in the reverse direction. I'm going to put, I'm going to put that down. And if I had to expand this, I'm going to start by plugging a 1 in for n, so this becomes 2 times 1, plus, and now I want to do 2 times 2, and I'm basically plugging in all these n values, and I'm starting at 1, that's what this one, that's what this one here means, I'm starting at 1, and I'm not going to stop until I get to 6, so this is going to be plus 2 times 3, plus 2 times 4, plus 2 times 5, plus 2 times 6. Okay, and if you notice that evaluating all these numbers produces the, the, the list, uh, the sum above, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. So let's just jot that down. So again, this means plug in numbers
starting at n equals 1 and ending at n equals 6. All right. Uh, in the next video, or in the next slide rather, not the next video, in the next slide, uh, we're going to see how to expand something in sigma notation like we just did here, um, just to give you a little bit more of a sense of how to use sigma notation. So here it says find the sum of 2k minus 3 as k goes from 1 to 5. So first of all, notice we're using a different letter than n, but that makes no difference whatsoever. Okay, so the letter can be whatever variable you want it to be. So in sigma notation, so when I write this out, in sigma notation, this question, or problem I guess I should say, this um, problem, is expressed succinctly like this. So there's my, uh, my sigma sign. 2k minus 3 is my rule. k is going from 1 to 5. All right? And so it says find the sum, so let's actually find the sum. Well, we're going to expand this notation. So I'm going to first by, start by plugging in 1. So this is going to be 2 times 1 minus 3. Then I'm going to plug 2 in. Then I'm going to plug 3 in. then 4, and then lastly, I'm going to plug in 5. Oop. All right, so again, if this was k equal to, you know, when I plugged in k equal to 1, I got that term. k equal 2, I get that term. k equal 3, k equal 4 k equal to 5, and then I stop because 5 is the last number up here on the top of the sigma symbol. Alright, and so now I simply evaluate. So 2 times 1 minus 3 is negative 1, then I get uh, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. And you add those all up, you get 15. Alright, so in general, let's just make a quick kind of a cheat sheet for sigma notation. So in sigma notation, you'll have the sum summation sign, the sigma symbol. You'll have a rule, which will have some variable. That's our function to sum. And you'll have the variable k going from 1 to some number, some other number. And that's your ending number to plug in and your starting number to plug in to plug in is 1. Um, we'll call k the index variable. So k is the index variable. Uh, and again, k uh, 1 is the starting number. Alright, so that's generally how sigma notation works, and in the next video we'll do a few more examples expanding.